Hi everyone, it's Mike, and I'm back to give you the top 5 winners and losers from the Game of Thrones Season 6 finale. So if you haven't seen the episode, fair warning, this will contain spoilers. Okay, before we jump into our list, oh my god. This episode by far had the most WTF moments in Game of Thrones history. So we will definitely be doing a full-on review that will probably be broken up into multiple parts, simply because there was so much content. And now for the losers. Coming in at number 5, Dario Naharis. While he didn't lose his life, he basically lost the next best thing in Danny. She is a stone-cold heartbreaker, but I don't think this is the last we've seen of Mr. Naharis. Coming in at number 4 on the loser list, the phrase, I was hoping for some stark revenge and some fray pies and DND &D delivered. Number three on the loser list, the people of King's Landing. Not only did some of these people perish as collateral damage from the fragments of that huge sept crushing them, now they have a total psycho running the show. The only thing holding Cersei together was her kids, and now she has little to no humanity left. The entire city is going to look like Flea Bottom before long. Number two on our loser list, the Sparrow slash Faith Militant. So it looks like Hubris took down the High Sparrow and all of the tinfoil theorists who thought he was Helen Reed. And coming in at number one, it is the Tyrells, and it is without contest. I desperately wanted Marjorie to escape with Loras. Nope. Highgarden has lost its heir as well as its king. Sorry, maybe Lady Olena will get some revenge. And now for the winner's bracket. Coming in at number five, Samwell Tarly. Sam with that huge collection of books would be like Tyrion in the largest brothel in Dorne. You've dreamt about this day, Sam. Get to work and figure out how to win this war for the dawn. Arriving at number four in the winner's circle is Jon Stark, the artist formerly known as Jon Snow. Jon was treated like an outcast growing up at Winterfell and has finally become a Stark. Who cares about a royal decree? During a secession, you are who you want to be. He is number one on this list, hands down, if they don't ominously chant, King of the North, a la Rob Stark, and we remember what happened to him. Also, remember the last time John won an election that he never asked to run for? God, I hope this turns out different. Coming in at number three, Arya Stark. She jumped into Littlefinger's teleportation device and showed up to serve up some fray pies. I had a feeling this would happen given the writer's complete disregard for logistics, but who cares at this point? Take another one off the list, Miss Stark. You, in fact, are someone. At number two on the winner's list is Daenerys Stormborn, and all of her other names. Really, you can throw Varys in here as well. After all, he did broker a deal to align Highgarden and Dorne with the Mother of Dragons, but Danny benefits from it all. I've lost count, but she may have the largest army that Westeros has ever seen. And three nuclear bombs named Drogon, Rhaegal, and Viserion. And drumroll for the number one winner. You might be wondering who is left, and the biggest winner is us. Yes, the viewers won today. All of the aforementioned action, and we finally got the R plus L equals J reveal. I don't care if they didn't spell it out completely. That's John Stark, aka King of the North. Well, folks, that wraps up our list of winners and losers for this episode. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section, along with any requests for videos you'd like to see. We're going to be analyzing the finale in its entirety, so click on the subscribe button in the bottom left-hand corner, as we'll have that and so much more now that we have nine months to wait for the next Game of Thrones action. So take care. I hope to see you back here.